Hello everyone. So I have a state of charge versus acceleration test on my Tesla Model 3 performance. Now what I'm going to show you is the acceleration of 0 to 60 and 0 to 100 for my Model 3 at various states of charge. We're going to go from 100 and we're going to go all the way down to 10 in 10% 10 increments. So at each percentage, it's plus or minus 1%. So say at 90%, it could be at 89, 90, or 91. So there's a little bit of leeway there, but not a whole lot, and I think we should be good. Um, it was a little difficult to get the percentage exact every single time, so I just did the best that I could. Now, I'm including the 0 to 100 test because I think that is much more indicative of what a quarter mile test might show as far as the percentage lost as state of charge goes down. Now, most Model 3 performances that I've seen run 112 to maybe 115 miles an hour in the quarter mile, and I'm running up to 100, so I think we could pretty easily extrapolate the data and see you know, that extra 12 to 15 miles an hour, what kind of loss we would see. So that's the reason for the zero to 100. With all the times, I'm also going to show the percentages lost from each increment down to the next, uh, for 0 to 60 and separately for 0 to 100. One of the things I definitely found interesting, and I, I kind of thought it was going to go this way, is that the 0 to 100 time is affected twice as much percentage-wise as the 0 to 60. So it takes a much bigger hit getting the car up to 100. And, you know, that is just, that's just how electric cars are with, you know, a single speed uh, gearbox or whatever you want to call it. Before we get too much further into it, each state of charge was tested three times on the exact same road each time. And what I did is I took an average of all three runs and that's the data that I'm going to list. I uh, made sure to use the same road. The uh, weather conditions were pretty close. There was probably a fluctuation of maybe five to eight degrees, but I did the best that I could. Now, the other oddity I want to talk about is the performance of 100% state of charge versus 90. So here's how I tested that. Uh, I charged the car up to 100%. Now, the car was cold. I mean, not cold. It's been sitting in my garage at 70 degrees, but it hadn't been driven around, so the battery really wasn't warmed up. So I took it out, ran it three times at 100%, drove it around, got it down to 90, 91, and I did the same three tests again, exact same road, and it got quicker. Now the fact that it got quicker at 90% definitely leads me to believe that the battery had warmed up a bit and we're getting better performance out of it. So I thought, well, I wanna see what kind of performance we can get at 100% with the battery warm, but the problem with that is in order to keep the battery at 100%, it's got to sit and charge, which it cools Why it does that. I may try to take it to a supercharger, you know, at like 90% and supercharge it at 10%, and maybe that'll keep it warm enough. But what I did instead, since I didn't have time, is I set the car in my driveway. It was 78 degrees today. So I put the car in the driveway in the sun and the interior hit about 101 degrees, but it sat out for a good hour and 20 minutes while it charged from 88% back up to 90 for my testing. And I figured, well, you know, that should keep the battery warm. So I took it back out and I ran it again. The interesting thing is the zero to 60 didn't pick up any time whatsoever. It had no effect whether, you know, the 100% with the battery cold or the 100% with the battery warmed up but the zero to 100 time did pick up 0.2 of a second. So that definitely improved. And that does show that, uh, you know, the warmer battery is gonna give better performance. And most of us Tesla fans know that. So I'm thinking this summer, maybe either let the car sit out in, you know, 90 to 100 degree heat for a while, charge, take it out and see what it'll do. Or like I said, take it to a supercharger, because I know the supercharger definitely generates more heat um, as it charges the battery much faster. Okay, so the data I'm gonna present for the zero to 60 will not include rollout. If anyone wants to know what rollout is, hop on the Google, YouTube, and uh, you know, search it. You know, They'll tell you exactly what rollout is better than I can. It's basically just an old drag racing term that the car gets to move about a, f about a foot before the time starts. 
And a foot doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking zero to 60 times, it can affect the time between 0.1 and up to 0.3 seconds uh, on a zero to 60 time, you know, depending on the car. So because of that, I'm dealing, I'm using a draggy. You can use a V-Box, I've got a draggy, and it tests zero to 60, true zero to 60. So the one second the car moves, it starts to zero to 60. So because of it's not, because it's not getting that one foot rollout advantage, the zero to 60 is gonna be a lower time, or I'm sorry, a higher time with the draggy and with no rollout. Now, most manufacturers, I gotta say all manufacturers, all car magazines, publications, they all list zero to 60 with the rollout. And it's not a true zero to 60, so I, don't, I still don't know why we use rollout, but whatever. Um, so Tesla quotes the Model 3 performance as 3.2 seconds with rollout. You'll see um, typically out there, and as far as a real time, guys are getting 3.3 to 3.5. My car is about 3.5. I've got bigger tires and wheels, and well, I probably weigh twice as much as the Tesla um, driver that they uh, put in the car to, to go get a, a, you know, a zero to 60 time. So it's not going to include, roll, include rollout. I will include the rollout numbers in the description of this video if you're curious about that. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to throw all the data up on the, uh, the screen here. It's just going to be a boring black box just so you can read it real easy. I'm going to give the percentages. Feel free to pause the video and uh, tell me what you think in the comments. Um, I'm also going to throw up uh, right after you look at the data, I'm going to throw up a video, uh, trying to do it a side by side video of 0 to 100 at 100% and 0 to 100 at 10%, and we'll see you know, what kind of difference it actually looks like. Steady. Uh, I was surprised that the state of charge affected the zero to 100 and the zero to 60 as much as it did. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.